Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium, the final cut. Uh, we don't have any time to waste necessarily because the time always keeps running. Although I don't specifically know if it keeps running while I'm looking at the journal, so I'm going to test this out now. Um, we have tasks of find out who is in the Union box. Garth has told you some unruly Union men gather in the mess hall of the Welling in Rags. They're not there today, but most likely they'll eventually show up. Okay, uh, get a reality lowdown. Uh, you've no idea where you are, Lena encouraged you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person? Rich people are educated. Uh, track down gun badge, ask Gardner about gardening in March. Pay for damages. Uh, who made the call reporting to crime? Um, call Sylvie using Kim's shortwave to ask whether she made the call. Did she say she didn't make the call? I thought she did. Never mind. Um, and inspect the victim's body. Alright, we've done a couple. Okay. So, did the time advance? No, the time didn't advance. That means I can now look at my inventory as well. We've got a couple of tools. Uh, we've got two items, a postcard and a kind green ape pen. Apart from that, nothing much. No other clothes other than the ones we've got equipped right now. And at 1pm we can go into the kitchen. Not before then, so we'll just go out again and talk to a couple more people. And at 1pm we'll go to the kitchen. That being said, I just saw something light up inside of the hall there. Like at the bottom right corner. Uh, but whatever, we'll, we'll hopefully remember that when we get back in. I haven't talked to you. Who are you? The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here. That's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Um... <laughs> What is this factor police business? Excuse me? She doesn't understand. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Never mind. She shifts in her seat awkwardly. Tell me, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least, that's what my grandma always told me. She smiles shyly. Yes, think about the cute grandma, <laughs> not the weird snow. Squint your eyes and look at her intently. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? An entrance to the yard? That's right. And the canal. The bookstore. The harbour gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. You are right. Noted. I'll keep it to myself. Glad to have been of service. Now you know. The locals are keeping tabs on you. We need directions. Of course. Where to? <laughs> uh, what's up in There's the north? The pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. And in the east? The harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. And in the east? The harbour gate. Uh, that's what Some I just shops asked. And the, bridge. <laughs> the canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What's on the other side of it? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. Mm. But that got closed down ages ago. Shame. And in the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. And um, where am I? What do you mean? Uh, j just tell me where we are, okay? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called Roundabout North, I think. Okay, that's all no for problem. now. No problem. She nods, brushing a fleck of soil off her cheek. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with the canary yellow glove. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber glove with no visible annoyance. Thank you. Um, let me put those on. Uh, hmm. Oh, I actually need to drag them. 
Okay. Alright, let's run to the corpse. See if the gloves alone are enough to drag it down from the tree. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Okay, we can't do it yet. We could maybe use a nose peg or something like that if we can find it anywhere. There was no real way to switch the camera up, I think. Was there? Rotate it or things like that. Um, let's go over this way. Okay, what what is this? Looks a bit like a post box. This Posla Vantorie mail collection box yeah. has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. <laughs> Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Nice. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. I feel you, mail collection box. I feel you. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully, them. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. All right. I hope you have a better, better time in the future, mailbox. What is this down here? Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. Okay. We've got a bench here. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. All right. Why not during us solving the murder? It's probably a good spot to think. What are you two? I need a map of this place. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. He covers his mouth to hide a burp. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to angry hog René first. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, come on. The spirited chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Okay. Tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Okay. What is this? An ancient fountain that doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Alright. Not what you usually do with fountains, but if you want to place trees in it, I guess you can. Okay, you can't go onto the roof itself. Only cars are allowed to go onto the roof. Hello, sir. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Honey. You're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? This one's still chewing on a sandwich. Are they, are they playing bocce or something like that? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. <laughs> These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Alright, I got this. Ball time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. Take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind. Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. 
probably a sponsored bill. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. Let go. Be the ball. I don't think that's the game they were playing. Merde! Bordel de merde! <laughs> A whorehouse of shit? Mm hmm. It wasn't whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24, and then some. Nothing to. What the hell is your problem? Uh, not a weak right triceps, that's for sure. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. I'm sensing anger and I don't understand why. Vandalize our game, son. We can't flip a tonk with five bull. <laughs> I thought it was shot. No, I didn't think it was shot put, but I'm going to say that. Well, it damn well isn't. It's petonk. You ruined a petonk game. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll try to fix Good. this. Good. Mistakes are forgiven when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now, why did you approach us? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Well, I've got about 40 minutes to waste until I can get to the kitchen or the, the dining hall. So I thought I'd just go here. You never know. He might know something. This is a good vantage point. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Yeah, it makes sense. Do you know what crater it is? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Uh, wait, who are the communists again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Oh, I need to scroll down. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Hmm. <laughs> I understand. I bombed this place too. Uh, why shell them here in Martinez? Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. He points to the northeast. <laughs> Not thoughtfully in turn to look northeast. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Hmm. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Oh, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There's a strange gleam in his eyes. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. 
You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions mm. on these things. Present one. Um, <laughs> present one. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing. I don't think. I just do. Uh, foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. <sighs> I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal, or even if that damn clan Friselle had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This was the plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Uh, um, who was this Frissel? Damn Frissel. He was a king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him and the crown. <laughs> he died in the hands of the Hyperlay. In a very public execution. Mm. You mentioned Guillaume? A true king in both blood and mind. Led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self deceit is present in his thinking. Sounds like this Guillaume abandoned him and he doesn't want to admit it. Hmm. Uh, what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? Yes. They forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Hmm. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of whirling in rags? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no grounds about assisting law enforcement, but this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law, so can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with the cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. What about police women? I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Not to mention keeping the station tidy and the man fed and happy. No man can afford to turn his eyes to the horizon if his rear isn't secured. If the women folk take care of that, then men can tackle the bigger issues. <laughs> you know what? Just agree with him. It doesn't matter. The RCM doesn't discriminate. <laughs> Women are held to the same standards as men, and as reflected in the quarterly statistics, are equally effective in their jobs. Unlike men, they also have to deal with the very same mentality you two are displaying right now. If it weren't for this, they would outperform us. I'm glad at least some people keep a level head in these turbulent times. 3%. Alright, what is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven. Although he was a clown. But he was our clown. Ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Are you sure? Alright. What else do we have here? Some 
Is that a camera or oh coin operated viewer? Inoperable. Okay. What do we have up here? On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. And this book has a rose, a pistol, and a half naked dame on its cover. What about you, child? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. <laughs> I am the law. Uh, hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stumps her feet to feel warmer. Uh, what kind of a store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. <laughs> that is quite a name. <laughs> Books, postcards, easy. Even a kid would know all of this. <laughs> I know what a book is, little girl. Books are like very long letters with stories inside them. Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> uh, oh, I also know what a postcard is. It's a small cardboard picture that you can send to a friend or a loved one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you got it, sir. What about board games? <laughs> I like playing games with people's minds. Okay, sir. This was all very enlightening. Can I help you with anything else? Uh, is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What was the book again? Uh, what is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of famous people. Yes, because in this timeline, an open sign has not been invented yet. Um, <laughs> Such a good trooper, you are already learning the value of hard work. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to help Mum out with the store. She smiles and stands upright like a little soldier. Uh, but shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. <laughs> I like our existentialist persona. What is school anyway? School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street. And the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Uh, isn't going to school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. That would sound not so bad if she wasn't being... Well, <laughs> made to stand out in the call to advertise that the store is open. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Hmm. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... <laughs> Bankrupt. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. Hmm. That sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Mm, what do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. That sounds like we should sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. Uh, how does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But that's so easy, it's not. Um, but Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. The lieutenant stands at your side, stern and serious. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Hmm, hmm. Enough about the curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. 
and the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Why would anyone want to read about crime? It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle where you can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you as if to find something policeman-like. Hmm. Well, what does a cop look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Um. Hmm. Well, it's... It's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's your... Head. Yes. Yes. Not head, child. Heads. Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous? She examines the picture of Dick Mullen. Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the chameleon chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Yes, yes, that's right. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. Uh, I may retry, but we'll go through all of the steps first. It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. I don't think you can narrow down romance with that, but sure. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. And apparently the riches, yes. Uh, hmm. What about when everyone is poor? That's really not a proper romance story. <laughs> That's more like everyday life. <laughs> yeah, poor people are boring. I guess, yes. People in books are always very interesting. Especially the romance people. Um, what about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mum. <laughs> yeah, you think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. She pauses, trying to figure out the appropriate answer. No, no, think about it. One way they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination. Only it's really long and drawn out, scarred for life, phantom limb. Um, no, I don't know. She looks at you with puzzlement. Doesn't ring a bell? Alright, I'll ask your mum. Yes, she knows books, definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? Perhaps. What about when both of the men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really well? Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. I see. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost. But then it all turns out just fine in the end. That's enough romance for me. I had other questions. Maybe some about other books? She wraps her chilled nose with a fist. Uh, who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old. Or artists and writers. Or musicians. Those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold reddened cheek then continues. I think that's why people read them. To find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from <laughs> reading them. Uh, reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. She smiles gleefully. Uh, famous for vain people. I have better things to do. Okay, sir. She stamps her feet, waiting for what comes next. Uh, okay, I'm now going to deduce something now. You fail to deduce anything substantial. <sighs> she waits intently. Uh, I'm a detective. I deduce that you are a girl. 
Come on, anyone would notice that. Hmm. Okay, bye. See you around in it. <laughs> what other books do you have here? A book about pate. Okay. This book, you don't really understand what it is about, nor does it seem important. A book about boyadero culture. It promotes freedom and roaming upstream. A book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Huh. Alright, let's go into the shop and then we'll go back to the main hall. Because it's already 1pm. Equip a flashlight in low light areas. Oh. I don't like low light areas. That's the mother, apparently. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Here we've got the book collects the national recipes of Arda. They're all about lake trout. Huh. Apparently a country that's into fish. A quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. And here we've got a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. Another boring book, just discarded here. Okay. Wait. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Look through the display Crime books. fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work. Glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Oh god, no. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels. Alright, anything else interesting in here? What about this? This looks interesting. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Let's look at the map of Revachol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, La Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And west of the river? Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. And um, Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Uh, Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. That is fine, you know, the only thing I wanted was the map for Martinez anyway. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. 
You seem to underestimate my resources, but sure, okay. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? Okay, we're not stealing it. Yeah, sure. It's always good to be informed of your surroundings. Yes. All right. Interact. Uh, the worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de saint Ghislaine and Rue saint sipar over saint Brune and Martinez North. Finally, come into a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Okay, is that it? Sure. What about this? Replace lost... Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, it also has a map here. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Um, it's waterfront. So I think this, yeah, this is the inn that we slept in. Uh, the question is, where did we go from there? I, I can't really tell. Why is Kuno lighting up like that? Oh, because Kuno is there. That's pretty much the... Um, that's the roles that we can do. Alright, so we are here in map wall. These are found white checks, yeah. yeah. Those on white are available to try now. Okay, we can try the hanged man and we can try stealing a map. But I don't really want to steal a map at the moment. What I would like to do is steal my way in there. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Hmm. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Let's examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Pull open. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're dumb if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? <laughs> this is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. It's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Madam, this is different. I am a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. You know what? No, I want to open them. No! Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. 
There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. All right, we'll talk to her first. But we will come back here. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask later, you know. Sir, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavour. Well, it seems I'll have to open the curtains after all. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependence. Yeah, <laughs> I demand tribute. Um, it would forge ties between us working people. Good practice for fighting our common enemy. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Fighting enemy. My philosophy is everyone just getting along. Mm. So are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched as if to give it more penetration. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. If it was just a storage room for employees, why it is so important why is it so important for you for me not to go in there? Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. If it is just a storage room, then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow, void raves. <laughs> you have new words. Ooh, new words. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Well, I mean, we've got free real. It's not like we can fall into much more bankruptcy than we're already in. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Did it? Uh... Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. But officer, there's nothing natural about entire companies declaring bankruptcy. I mean, there is. I'm talking about caca demons, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Mm, would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A paradetective. <laughs> um, yes, but before that, your daughter's the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Come now. It's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect an answer. Sure, ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, 
I hope they turn out as great as Mayonette. Yeah, the way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Denial is the way she copes with criticism. <laughs> I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Mm, depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her, as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries. In some more developed countries, this sort of thing is two felonies. Child labor and slavery. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. The lieutenant taps his foot. Okay, let's change the subject. The woman before you scans the store. Her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. <laughs> Dave smart ass parenting advice. Sure, convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. <laughs> Wait, what if I don't want to lie? No, no, we'll lie. Madam, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. Uh, I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. You see, it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. How do you know all this? Here we go. <laughs> D, D bad. <laughs> uh. Your words brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. You're part Seminese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Yes, of course. The hand of fate guides us. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. For I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman. A witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney? The passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Farewell for now, book peddler. Alright. Well, for now we'll go back to the main hall. Um, we'll go into that area quite a bit later on because I'd like to improve my skills a bit first perhaps it doesn't really sound like the area you should just enter willy-nilly without any fault whatsoever <laughs>